What's up guys? After learning the front row, I decided to continue my calisthenics freestyle journey by learning the muscle up to standing on the bar because it looks cool and it seems doable. Initially, I thought a lot of pure push strength was required to push myself on top of the bar. But I quickly realized that I could kick my legs and utilize momentum just like the front row to make it easier. The timing of pushing with the arms and initiating the momentum with the legs at the same time was hard to grasp. After multiple attempts, my body finally started to understand it. At the end of day 1, I was able to get up with one of my feet touching the bar. On day 4, I was pretty comfortable in getting up with one of my feet touching the bar. I decided to climb up the bar and get a feel of what it was like to stand on the bar. It was pretty tough to balance, so I had to repeat this multiple times in order to feel confident. After that, I decided to attempt to get up with both feet and stand on the bar. I was able to complete the entire movement by using the pillars on both sides as a crutch. On day 7, I continued to attempt to get up with both feet and stand on the bar. For the first 30 minutes, I wasn't able to make progress and my movement was identical. I always undershot and had to use the pillars as a crutch to pull myself up. I thought I had to adjust my upper body to correct my balance. But eventually, I figured out that it was because I wasn't popping up high enough. All the failed attempts were due to my popping up just enough to land both of my feet on top of the bar. But my body wasn't in a good position to balance. If I push harder with my arms and kick my legs harder to generate more momentum, I will be able to pop up higher and land on the bar in a higher position, which makes it easier to balance. After a few attempts, I was able to do it successfully without touching the pillars. Ooh. Since I intended to muscle up and stand on the bar, it wouldn't look good if I pumped multiple times and then stood on the bar. Therefore, I started to practice pumping up to the bar without any pumping. It was a lot difficult to do it without the pump because it was very difficult to get the right timing of the arm push and leg kick. And it was difficult to get the right amount of force as well. I started to not only undershoot, but also overshoot. With a lot of attempts, I was finally able to do a few successfully. Ooh. Yo! At this point, I was a bit tired, but I still decided to give it a try on the high bar. I was completely paralyzed with fear. I knew if I undershot, I could always drop back and catch myself on the bar. But if I overshot, I might break my ankles at that height. So I decided to play it safe and call it a day. On day 10, I was prepared. I brought my crash pad to the park so I wouldn't be worried about overshooting because I could land on my crash pad. Initially, I wasn't able to remember the right amount of arm push and leg kick and find my balance. But after a few practice attempts, I was able to get it all back fairly quickly. After successfully doing it 3 times in a row, it was time for me to attempt it on the high bar. Not going to lie, it was terrifying to let go of my hands at such a high height. I don't know if you guys ever had this kind of feeling. When you are really nervous, like taking a fate deciding college entrance exam, or having an interview for your first job, or even asking a girl out for the first time, your legs lose 80% of the power. There's even a Mandarin term for it, which literally means legs getting weak. Describing precisely this physical weakness to indicate psychological stress. And that's what was happening to me. It doesn't really matter that much if your legs lose 80% of the power when you are taking an exam or having an interview for a job or asking a girl out. But it is a big issue when you are trying to do the muscle up to stand on the bar. Sometimes I couldn't pop up high enough. Sometimes I popped up but I couldn't straighten my legs. I tried to ignore the sense of fear my body is giving me and power through. Eventually, Man, does that count? <gasps> I count it. I was able to straighten my legs and do a complete rep.
but without checking the footage, I knew chances were high that this rev was not clean. I should have stood on the bar in control for at least 2 more seconds and dropped back behind the bar and regripped the bar instead of landing forward in front of the bar. Knowing how brutal YouTube comments can be, I knew I had to give it one more try to get a clean rep. And this happened. Unfortunately, I injured myself. This video won't end with a happy ending like all of my other videos. I should have listened to my body and shouldn't have ignored the fear response. I thought bringing a crash pad would eliminate the only possible way to get injured from this move. But the lesson I learned is that when your body is pushed towards the limit, there are countless ways to get injured no matter how prepared you are. I had to walk home with a bleeding leg only to discover how severe the cut was on my leg when I arrived home. Unfortunately, I will have to conclude that I only kinda learned the muscle up to standing up on the bar. I decided to reach out to Daniel again and told him what happened. After talking to him, I realized that learning the muscle up to standing on the bar as my second calisthenics freestyle move might not be the best idea. Daniel has agreed to coach me regularly, so I can learn from him the right way to learn calisthenics freestyle instead of trying it by myself and ending up having myself injured. I am very thankful for Daniel's generosity, and that also means there will be more high quality calisthenics freestyle progression videos coming out in the future once I healed up. So definitely stay tuned. Make sure to like, subscribe, and check out my website, geekclimber.com. See you in the next video.